This episode of the What's Happening Delco podcast is brought to you by Delco Meets for Business. Check us out on Meetup, register, and attend one of our fantastic networking meetings, which we meet on the first and third Thursday at the Brick House in Ridley Park, and the second and fourth Thursday at the Upper Crust in Newtown Square. We look forward to seeing you there. What's happening, Delco? I'm Rich Shane, and welcome to the What's Happening Delco podcast. Today, I'm joined by CJ Deary and Jerry Sheehan of Cedar Creek Catering. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thanks, oh, Rich. It's nice to have you here. And what I'm excited about is you were a guest of, of our video spotlight a couple of years ago. And I know for Cedar Creek Catering, a lot has been going on, new improvements, menus, additions, things like that. But for those that are not familiar with Cedar Creek Catering, how did all that get started? Um, Cedar Creek started in um, my garage right in Norwood. So I um, seen the kind of the writing on the wall of a corporate job and decided to build a commercial kitchen, legal commercial kitchen in my uh, in my garage. So that's how Cedar Creek was born. Um, I really that was tired of the corporate corporate world, but long story short is I wanted to do something on my own and create and not have to jump through too many corporate hoops of um, we need something, go get it. You want to do this today? Go get it. So it's a little bit more freedom um, or a lot more freedom, I should say. <laughs> and uh, you get to do what you want to do and you're happy and you love it. So that's kind of how Cedar Creek evolved or started. So from those humble beginnings, where are you now? Talk about your current location and uh, what you're doing from that location. Uh, so we, we actually got a uh, really sweet spot right in media off the, uh, the heart of State Street. We're actually underneath a gigantic white church, 350 West State Street. Our, um, our door is actually on Baker Street. So we're located right in that heart of media where um, we have a access to a hall that holds 200 people, a BYO hall, which is kind of hard to come by these days. And um, our kitchen is pretty much right on that back door, like I was saying, on Baker Street. So the food is right here. When you're at the hall, you're able to uh, access Cedar Creek. The beauty of what you have there is you have a hall that you can cater events out of, and you have the ability to cater off-site as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, we do off-site, on-site weddings, the middle of yeah nowhere with no electric kitchen. We make it happen. What can people expect when they come to Cedar Creek Catering? Um... I think a little, a lot of love and passion behind the food. Um, all scratch made, great seasonal local ingredients as much as possible. Uh, just using great techniques and simple food done well. Uh, we added on um, Jerry that's sitting right here. Um, the difference from the last time, I think that when we uh, when we did this interview was pre-COVID and after signing a nine-year lease and I was crapping my pants um, on figuring out how to pay for all this is um, we, we got through and pretty much Jerry walked through the back door. And if those who don't know, Mr. Sheehan, uh, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, um, Jerry's an awesome artisanal baker, European style baker that just pretty much um, we're like kind of the bad news bears at Delco. So I don't think anybody in Delco is doing what we're doing, using the scratch ingredients um, and putting the love into the food. So, Jerry, talk about some of these artisanal delicacies that um, you're producing and what people can expect to enjoy when they um, just bring what you do into their catering. So I kind of specialize um, in European uh, style those, for instance, I do brioche, I do um, baguettes, I do sourdough crusty breads. We do uh, 
German uh, or Bavarian soft pretzels. And we do rye bread. We do a sourdough white bread. Beignets. Yeah, we do French beignets and um, puff so pastry. Puff pastry. <laughs> and we started getting into croissants. So we're doing a, a broad array of European, uh, you know, cross countries there. Um, really solid, traditional types of doughs and then using those doughs in different ways. And um, it's uh, we have a certain market here and it's really caught on well. So especially like uh, when we have like yes. On Sunday, we had an event here in media, and we did um, we did pretzels, we did stuffed pretzels, we did um, nolas, which is a style, a New Orleans style of beignets. We did uh, uh, cream filled beignets, and uh, they really did sold very well. And then we sell them at markets as well. We also do a very nice pizza. For the both of you, talk about your beginnings of how you got into the culinary and the baking world. Where did you, where did all that start for you? I, I was born here in uh, Delco and I'm the oldest of uh, what I call a traditional uh, American Irish Catholic family, oldest of seven. And um, when I was, I went to uh, St. Joe's and I was studying accounting and believe it or not, German literature and in my junior year, I did junior year abroad in Germany. And then I went over to Europe after I graduated and worked over there for a number of years, worked in Mexico, worked in Manhattan. And all those experiences kind of, um, I wanted to, I guess it, it made an impression on me as far as the quality of the food and the different styles of food and particularly baked goods and then, and breads, uh, especially in Europe and uh, 2009, after working in accounting and finance for 25 years, uh, I was laid off and I decided I wanted to work with my hands and then um, decided I, I think I could uh, start baking. So I did different internships and so forth. And then I started uh, doing baking from there. And almost, I would say 95% of what I do is European based and um, except maybe for my American pies, which we do at Thanksgiving time and at Christmas time. How about for you, CJ? Where did that cooking bug hit for you? Uh, good old nifty fifties. <laughs> so it was like a high school job. Um, my buddy was the expo and they needed a fry guy and milkshake person. So, um, you know, I was six, 17, I, 16, 18, I don't know, somewhere right around there. And he asked me to come up for an interview. He goes, come on up, man. I'll teach you how to do this stuff. So I walked in and um, pretty much got the job on the spot. They asked me to work. And just like today, hey, you want a job? Come on in and work. So I put on one of them little funny white hats with my name on it and um, started to cut fries. So it just kind of, um, it, it bit me. I think the atmosphere, um, there's a couple of stories that I really probably shouldn't tell <laughs> something on here but it's one of those um it, it kind of it, it just bit me and i learned and progressed through the years from working at mom and pop places to you know going to school where i didn't even i didn't know how to cut a pineapple i just kind of had this idea of i wanted to work with food and um uh, things have grown from there so Traveling, I guess, all over Florida and working in every kind of different hotel, restaurant, South Beach. Um, if I wasn't learning something, I would scoot on my way and get another job from another chef and kind of just absorb what I could. And then when I'm done, scoot on my way. And here you landed in Media, Pennsylvania. You spoke about weddings Talk about those events that you do, what people can look forward to if they're thinking about doing something. Give them some ideas that Cedar Creek is the caterer you want to have for your next event. Yeah, so uh, we do. We, we run the gamut. So if we're not at the farmer's market where we are at Berwyn and um, in media, 
We do off offsite events where if you want a chef to come in and there's 12 ladies that want to just do a ladies night at their house and bring somebody over, we'll do a, a nice little appetizer and wine course for you. Um, we can, it's plenty of scratch made appetizers to pick from, but if you wanted something as simple as a baby shower, bridal shower, um, if you're not having it in the hall, we, we drop it off of your house, set it up and it's full service. It's not just, um, Hey, just here's the food. Good luck. We actually come with servers, bartenders if needed. We clean up, make sure everything's you know high and tight, ready to go, looking nice. And, um, the food matches the service. So um, besides those, we also do high-end weddings. So we'll go to your spot. Um, there's a, just a quick little example out in Chad's Ford. There's this awesome 900-acre barn or farm that has a huge barn on it that does weddings. And uh, there's no, no running water. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. And um, we, have to, we had to set up shop and make sure we couldn't even use sternos inside the barn. So pretty much we were handcuffed and had to make it happen. So um, we do a lot of offsite events that way in the middle of nowhere. We'll, we'll set up a full kitchen and put on a wedding for two, 300 people. I think what's important that you spoke to there, CJ, is that, you know, this is something you have experience with that for somebody, whether they're doing a 12 lady event in their home or this wedding you've pretty much seen and are prepared to handle whatever comes your way. Because the last thing you want to do is have a full house of people and hear that the, the caterer wasn't ready or didn't know or didn't have water and wasn't expecting this. So your area of expertise and you give people peace of mind. The food's going to be scratched. It's going to be great. It's going to come out you know, amazing. And people can kind of lower that anxiety level knowing that they're going to have a wonderful event with Cedar Creek catering there. Yeah, you, you hit it. It's a, it's a one-stop shop. It's, it's um, to, to lower the anxiety, as you're saying, uh, we come across, Krista does an awesome job. Um, she's our event coordinator, Krista argue. And she's the one that would answer the phone and make sure kind of uh, de-escalate any issue that, that goes on. So if you're looking to rent linens, um, you want a mummer's pan. Um, you want, you know, full service where it's top of the line plated meals. We, you know, we can knock that out and kind of ease the pain, as I say. There's something new that you're doing with Cedar Creek or something that's newer to Cedar Creek. What is it you're doing? Uh, the Farmers markets. Oh, we're also doing toast too. We're uh, we have a like an online ordering platform where we're taking orders. Uh, we tried it with a different version platform, and it kind of didn't fly. And we met a uh, a local person that is helping us out. Her name is Amy. If you've talked to her, um, she's awesome. She's been helping us kind of get everything situated, dot the i's and t's, and um, launch this thing. Uh, we're doing. Some of our home runs, as I call them. So Jerry makes this awesome sourdough pizza dough uh, that we do with like fig jam, caramelized onions, some really killer Danish blue cheese, um, regatta cheese. I mean, we so many different like little pies, different different uh, flatbread pizzas that they're they're awesome. They're kind of adult kicked up pies, as I I say. But then you also have your tomato pie and your upside down pie too. So how do people order these from, you said through toast, how do people get a hold of you so they can order some of these killer pies? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, um, you, you can go right online, right to our website, cedarcreekcatering.com. And uh, you'll see this little kind of toast symbol and it'll bring you to online ordering. And we do uh, like a pizza and wing combo where you're able to do for Thursday or Friday night pickup. So um, we're starting it off just Thursday and Friday. We're just kind of, you know, starting off slow. And we're going to be adding some um, some killer things on there, like our stuffed pretzel, cheesesteak stuffed pretzel, our Reuben pastrami stuffed pretzel, um, different soups and things like that coming up. So quiches, we make awesome scratch quiches. Uh, so it's just the beginning, and you're able to pre-order so you can order anytime and you're able to pick up 
either Thursday or Friday. So it's completely online, nice and easy. Put your card in, pay, swing by the back on Baker Street uh, to our door. Um, and we'll do curbside or you hit the little button, let us know you're here, and we'll uh, we'll come drop it off to you. Sounds Please. delicious. And it sounds like something the Delco community should be taking advantage of. So go to the website at cedarcreekcatering.com, right? Yep. And hit the toast button. And all the all the items will come up there for and keep an eye out for, as you said, the menu will be growing as ah. being from Delco. We normally ask where your place is for cheesesteaks, if you're going to go for cheesesteaks. But I'm going to change it up because my guess is you're making your own cheesesteak. You may not be going out for one, but what do you like on your cheesesteak? How do you both take your cheesesteaks? Oh, I'll let you do this one there. <laughs> I I just like uh, cheesesteak with provolone and mushrooms and then fried onions. <laughs> okay. And how about for you, CJ? Um, sometimes I lean towards the buffalo chicken cheesesteak, but most of the time I just go fried onions and uh, uh, provolone. All right. I am going to ask, because if there's that time when you're like, you know what? I'm to... tired. Of, I'm tired of cooking, and I just want to pick them up. Is there a go-to place in Delco that you uh, you grab these cheesesteaks at? I go to Jim's on Baltimore Place. There. All right, Jim's is your go-to. Uh, yeah. You know, it sounds like you make these phenomenal pizzas. You're yeah. out and about, and you're heading to a catering event, and you need a convenience store option. Where are you stopping? Royal Farms or Wawa? Oh well, that's what we choose between. Definitely Wawa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going Wawa all the way. <laughs> How do you explain Delco to somebody that's never been here or is not familiar with Delco? Uh, it's gritty. It's the best way I can put it. Um, I lived here all my life. I love it. It's just gritty. You either love it or you hate it. Um, it grows on you. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm through and through Delco all the way. <laughs> Jerry? <laughs> so um, one of the things I always kid CJ about is uh, I call it, I say he's he's from Norwood. I say he's from Lower Delco. And I'm from Drexel Hill, Springfield, and Havertown and say I'm from Upper Delco. Yep, so yep, yep. that's how I kind of <laughs> look at Delco. I had relatives who lived in Norwood. Parents used to go to Iron Pub. We used to always, when I was a kid, which is 50 years ago, we used to go to Charlie's on, uh, coming up from the shore at 420 and Baltimore Pike there and stuff like that. So it's kind of some of the memories I have of Delco. If you have somebody coming in from out of town, friends, family, you want to take them or give them that Delco experience, where are you yeah. sending them or where are you taking them? <laughs> you got to edit this on Lynn Turks. <laughs> Hey, if that's the experience you want them to have, you know, if if you think that's the Delco experience and that's where you're sending them, okay. Oh, All right, I'll give a more serious answer here. Is I'd send I'd send them the Picas. Yeah, I'll tell you what we. I don't know if this this is one episode. I mean, has has created more laughter than than any episode we've done. So that's good. Um, good. good. With both of you and your careers and what you do, is there any who, who influences you? Who impacts you? So I used to work for for a chef. Um, he worked. I worked at the cancer treatment center. I met met him shit about twelve years ago, longer than that. Um, his name was Jack Shoot, and he was a master chef from. Um, he graduated CIA. He taught at CIA. And he was just an awesome guy. He was a local Delco guy. So I rode Harleys. You know, we always rode around and kind of took rides together and uh, BS and stuff like that. And I wound up working for him at the cancer center and just learned an immense amount of um, not, not only passion, but just to just to focus, just to focus on uh, what you do and um just to, just the love behind it. Either you're you're in it, so just do it right and don't half you know half ass as they say. And, um, but yeah, he would be one of the inspirations, definitely. How about and for my, you, Jerry? 
So I would say my uh, the person that influenced me the most once I realized that I was going to dedicate the rest of my life towards baking was a guy by the name of Jeffrey Hamelman, who's a master is a master baker, which technically we don't really have that term here, but he he uh, he went to school in Europe uh, to learn baking and, and pastry and so forth. And he's got that title. And a lot of his baking was uh, a lot of the stuff he does, the breads and especially the German pretzels and rye breads and so forth is um is something that it influenced me uh very strongly and uh in fact the pretzel uh you know with a few changes is his pretzel recipe and he he's written some books and uh he actually ended up his career about three years ago and he, he was working as the head uh chef at um in, Arthur, in vermont that's awesome is there anything that we haven't talked about today? Anything that you want listeners to know about you or more about Cedar Creek Catering? Yeah, we do. We're coming up. Right? We do it. We do this awesome event and it's going on our fifth year. We do it right in the hall. And it started out as um, kind of like a little church, uh, a church meal where the, you know, they would come down and I said, why don't we do food for the church members? And there's a food bank. I don't know if anyone knows or they, if they don't know. Our kitchen's right next to Media Food Bank. So Media Food Bank um, helped us out the first year of donating a few turkeys and some stuffing and things like that. A lot of canned, canned goods. And we wanted to kind of kick it up because I didn't know what to expect. I said, I'll just make something out of whatever you give me. I don't mind. Um, so we made it happen the first year and I said, why don't we kick it up a little notch and actually use some real veggies and real stuffing and kind of make it a real Thanksgiving meal. So, um, we kicked it up from there and we wound up doing, I think we're up to like 500, 600 meals and it's open to anyone in Delco, anybody that wants a hot meal, you don't have to be on, you know, and it just, just come out You want to sit with people. We've got a hall that holds 200. It's totally decked out. Um, you're going to get all the tables lined up. And pretty much you go through this awesome buffet where there's turkey confit, where we do the legs. We'll salt the legs and cook them in their fat and tear them apart. And it's just this pulled apart, salty, fatty goodness because um, the legs, get un they're kind of underlooked. But then, the, you know, we have cranberries and. Um, sweet potatoes and regular garlic potatoes and we do all the mash everything in house and we have these awesome volunteers no lie there's probably about 15 people in the kitchen which me jerry and two others right now are like sardines and that you when you put 15 people in a kitchen it's really tight so uh we we have fun it's an awesome event and um yeah we'd love for more people to come out and just not only get to know us, but come out, say hi, and uh, get a hot meal. CJ, as you talked about it, we met prior to the pandemic. And for us at What's Happening Delco, it's been a pleasure for us to watch your business grow, continue to establish itself in the Delco community. We wish you that continued success. And thank you so much for being a friend of What's Happening Delco. And we look forward to the next time seeing you and uh, all these delicious treats, Jerry, that you're putting together and this, these delectable food items. If you're looking for catering, make sure you give Cedar Creek a call. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate Thank you. It.